welcome to the best of TV Burp, saucy expert on Antiques Roadshow. Now, I know you're not related to one another. That's correct. But did you know your jugs are? <laughs> the bookcase gives man a drink on Michael Winner's Dining Stars. There you go, mate. Cheers, plate. <laughs> Father Christmas flirts with presenter on Around the World in 80 Faiths. I think your beard looks very soft. <laughs> so does your hair. <laughs> now, good soap will always keep you guessing as to what's coming next, as in this scene on EastEnders, where Masood <laughs> is seen chopping a cucumber whilst talking distractedly to Jane Beale. Zenab didn't want to talk to the manager on the phone, no. She likes to intimidate authority face to face, so now she's stuck on a bus, in Bow, going nowhere. Hmm, where's this going? <laughs> so I said to Tam, he helped me out, I'd give him a fiver, and, you know, time is of the essence. What could possibly happen next? <laughs> and 25 minutes later, we're still stuck in negotiations, and I said to him, Tam, I just need your help, mark my word, sooner or later, something's gonna go... <sighs> <laughs> I just don't understand how that could have happened. It was my own stupid fault. That's all right. Uh, I wasn't really looking, and then suddenly, I don't really know what happened. <laughs> I took my eye off the cucumber. Oh, I see you were chopping the cucumber, but weren't looking what you were doing, hence the cut to your finger. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> well, that reminds me. I must do a little preparation for my dinner. First of all, I must cut these chops up with a cleaver. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's the wife's birthday uh, in a couple of days, so what I thought... Ah! Soup, I suppose. Uh, let me just get the uh, the celery uh, and uh, just turn that on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've liquidised my hand. Oh, oh, I was talking. I was distracted. I, oh, I can't turn it off. It's just. For any kids watching, some grown-ups think that because I did all that stuff, you might try and copy me, and they phone up ITV and complain. So, just to be sure, don't try and chop your hand off with a cleaver! <laughs> don't put your hand in a liquidizer! <laughs> and don't bite through electric leads! <laughs> I'm grown up silly. <laughs> Horizon this week. Horizon this week tackled the question what's the problem with nudity? Which threw up a number of interesting questions. With each discovery comes new insight on what it means to be human and naked. So, would you strip in front of strangers? <laughs> what about on national television? Depends how drunk I was, I suppose. <laughs> what about it? Needless to say, there were the various experts. Dr. Hazelton collects photographs of women at various stages of their menstrual cycle, including ones taken just before ovulation, when they are most fertile. Well, it's nice to have a hobby, Bobby. <laughs> but I know what you're thinking. How did nudity evolve? Darwin was positing that certain individuals, notably females, would choose certain males because of their hairless condition, and they would preferentially mate with them. And so those individuals who had less hair would be more reproductively successful. I have to say, that has not been my experience. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. Fish. Hey, 
there's a really exciting new show on Channel 5. No, c- calm, please. Calm. Please calm down. Yeah, it's all about family-run haulage business, Eddie Stobar. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds just like the day-to-day running of a haulage business. How can that be exciting? Well, it's not always quite so straightforward as driver Mark found out. Where have you moved faster? Mark searches for his ten pallets in a haystack of a hundred. Mark's got to make three drop-offs locally before making a final delivery at Doncaster over a hundred miles away. Quick to Doncaster? That's over a hundred miles away. Still, it's a pretty direct route. As usual, Gary's planned a crazy schedule for Mark. Right. OK, so you're going from Crick to Lutworth, back into Crick, nearly Doncaster and Balmer. Yeah? yeah? I'm on it, kid, I'm on it. Crick to Lutterworth, back into Crick, then to Newey, then Doncaster and on to Bolton. That's not a madness. <laughs> Mark doesn't stand a chance. Doncaster is a time-sensitive delivery. If he's late, the load could be turned away. Turned away! See? <laughs> this is real nail-biting stuff! Mark, find his load and get on the road in time. We'll find out later. I'm on the edge of my seat here! <laughs> I need to know now! Their drivers cover the distance to the moon and back every day, making deliveries every four seconds. But anything can go wrong. Come up, air consumption critical. The air consumption's critical! Don't panic! Don't panic! No, no. For the planners back at base, it's a logistical time bomb. You just keep that load on time, John. Come on. I'm not John! <laughs> You've been put through to the wrong number. My son is made to quit into Lutterworth, back into quit New England, Doncaster, and Bolton. If he doesn't make it, he'll be turned away. And the air consumption's critical! <laughs> I felt for Fiona, though, who is charged with delivering the cream cakes. Today, Fiona's first job is collecting cakes from a local bakery near Newark before delivering them to Tesco supermarket over 130 miles away in Didcot. Cream cakes are a notoriously delicate cargo, so Fiona's going to have to take great care. Cream cakes, oh, my God. If you break hard, it's going to be a big, creamy mess in the back. <laughs> Chocolate bunny for Easter. Yeah, here it is. Uh, the, oh, that front tooth looks a little bit odd. <laughs> Doesn't look. Uh, oh, what is it? I suppose it's some sort of sweet, is it? Mm. I'm really, really sorry, but we had to stop the belt. I lost one of my acrylics in the Easter bunnies. And we've done hundreds of times. <laughs> How many times? No nail extensions, no nail jewellery. It's unhygienic. <laughs> <laughs> I was intrigued by the mention of a new character in the already crowded village of Emmerdale. I hope you've been behaving yourself. Me? I hope you've not been making new friends like you did in Vegas. Oh, but it's OK for you to make new friends. Eh? The Toffee Boy? Toffee Boy, yes. <laughs> I wonder what he looks like. Hello, sir! <laughs> and who might you be? Well, I am the Toffee Boy, sir, from uh, Emmerdale. Yeah, I thought you might be. Uh, <laughs> there was a nice old example of a popular board game on the Antiques Roadshow at the weekend. So this is our most fabulous game, obviously. Gioco reale denari in tavola, oro coperto non si paga. I've played that. <laughs> How it works is you go from square to square and you do whatever it says on the square. But it's full of the most wonderful, wonderful pictures. I mean, a picture of a camel here, a picture of Harlequin there, 
and oddly enough, somebody. Um, yes. Yes, doing something up there. Yes. I mean that. That's <laughs> Hmm. Hope I don't land on that square. <laughs> Casualty now, and what is it about a man in a neck brace that makes their eyes appear to follow you around the room? Where's he going? Where's he going? Where's he going? There was another big dilemma at Holby General this week. Just one, uh, one final question. Spandau Ballet or Duran Duran? Mm, Spandau Ballet or Duran Duran? Which is better? There's only one way to find out. See you after the break. That's it, Simon. Welcome back to the best of TV Burp. New German dance on Strictly. I really want to bounce back for them Thanks. as well as myself. <laughs> cheese with wind problem on Wallace and Gromit's World of Invention. Here's a piece of strong cheese. Cheese has a sound probably all of its own. <laughs> and on Kirsty's homemade home, Kirsty makes a lovely pair of new pants for Phil. Once you've joined the panels together, you get your perfect pear shape. Just remember to leave a hole for the balls to go into. <laughs> I'll tell you what you don't see enough of on TV. A three-legged deer attacking a video camera. Hey, hey, son. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, hey. It <laughs> it's nice to see. <laughs> this was Johnny's New Kingdom, which follows West Country legend Johnny Kingdom as he attempts to film wildlife with a camcorder, whilst being filmed by a proper camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He doesn't do it all with his camcorder. No. He's got a couple of hidden cameras, too. Just look at the screen when it comes on. Now, what do you think that is? I've no idea, mate. <laughs> This week, Johnny introduced us to the world of the Dormouse. And what does the Dormouse like to do for a holiday? But before you go to the expense of buying loads of nest boxes, we use these nesting tubes, because Dormice will camp in these. Yeah, usually go camping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they could use a mobile phone cover as a rucksack. There's a rucksack for a Dormouse. <laughs> and inside there, he's got half a cotton bud, soaked in petrol as a torch. <laughs> uh, as a sleeping bag, he uses a child's sock. <laughs> And then, uh, as a tent, what he can do is use his, uh, a lady's bra. <laughs> like uh, there's two little tents there for them. Um, but first, on the floor of the tent, for extra comfort, he puts a panty liner. Uh, but uh, I haven't got one of those. <laughs> uh, Johnny asks all the right questions, though. Now, why, why is um, why is this one so steep? Because the branch is steep. <laughs> you do. You do have to be careful with dormice, though, as they're protected species. Not just anyone can handle them. To disturb a dormouse in its nest is uh, unlawful unless you have a license. Yeah, yeah, see, I'm licensed to disturb a dormouse. Yeah, there's, there's the license there, it's my license. <laughs> Given by the DDLA license to disturb dormouse uh, authority. Uh, although I got three points on it after I disturbed a dormouse and it made a complaint, but it was, yeah, it was quite a sharp stick. Um, <laughs> Eleven points on your license. You can't disturb dormice no more. No, you have to go back to disturbing field mice, which is nowhere near as much fun. <laughs> Johnny's got his own idea of how to attract dormice. Nice to see you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. But you know, he thinks my tennis balls won't work. But I'm going to put some food in mine, some nuts and some raisins.
was nice to see a lady playing a banjo horse on how to look good naked this week. And I always think people do. If I don't like what I see. Yeah, the banjo horse. Never one to encourage gratuitous nudity, I'm really not sure about Gox competition. I meet people all different shapes and sizes who dislike their bodies, but I also meet those rare people who are confident with the skin they're in. And if the calendar girls can do it, so can you. Up and down the country, you're stripping off and piling on their body confidence. I want you to keep sending me the results. I bet you do. Remember the 70s? This. Well, if you do remember the 70s, you'll love Channel 4's Never Did Me Any Harm, where a today's mum figures it would be a good idea for her kids to get a taste of what it was like in the 70s. And it brought it all back to me. The clothes. Uh, it's rough and ready. Those giant pyjamas. Remember them, girls? <laughs> and what about the transport? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Horse and cart. <laughs> doing the research on this show? <laughs> Is this the 1970s or the 1870s? They're making it up! <laughs> Even the weather was different back then. These days, they arrange cats and dogs. In those days... We should encourage everybody to have a little whistle, unless people get quite embarrassed, actually, oh. won't they? Don't Just cats. <laughs> Remember Agadoo with the hand movements? Well, the McIver family have come up with their own version. Each night, first, your feet, your armpits and your private bits. Face, feet, armpits, private bits. Face, feet, armpits, private bit. Face, feet, armpits, private bit. Well, <clears throat> you get the idea with that. <laughs> but of course, the great joy of this program, if you did grow up in the 70s, was the chance to see some of the old TV shows. And one in particular that united the nation every Saturday tea time with viewing figures of upwards of 23 million. What is it? Yeah, it. A television programme that I used to watch when I was a little girl. Hi, guys and girls, and welcome to Television Burp. We're professionals now. And isn't it strange when you mistake a wine goblet for a microphone? All on street, move it! Go to Cowley, over. It's a wine goblet, Cowley. Have you read the papers? <laughs> <laughs> they say never work with animals, but what do the animals say? Well, they say never work with Susie Birchall off Coronation Street. He can stay for tonight as long as he doesn't keep me awake with his yowling. Oh, he won't yowl, as long as he's dry and fed. Oh, mind me head! <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. <laughs> Go on, they like the same thing. Good girl, Petra. Hi, Harry. Peter the from Blue Peter. Have you noticed how the test card girl looks just like that Jenny Hanley off Magpie? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. But which is better, Jenny Hanley or the test card girl? There's only one way to find out. Fight! Oh, still... You don't like it. Well, it does seem very dated and slow, doesn't it? <laughs> I must say, it's nice to see Wallace and Gromit back on our screens in Wallace and Gromit's World of Invention. <sighs> Not everyone's cup of tea. Brings us to a new item that I'm calling, well, I certainly didn't expect to see that. I've seen so many things since I've been doing this show. From Wagbo to a piano playing cat. Anything is possible, or so they say, but... Certainly didn't expect to see that. <laughs> Channel 4's Coach Trip. 
continues its journey through Europe, and our travellers were taken to Copenhagen under the watchful eye of tour guide Brendan. I did think the contestants overreacted slightly when he fell out of his kayak. Mind out the way, don't knock me over, because if you bump... <laughs> I do like Brendan, though. I don't know what it is about him. <laughs> te amo, te amo. Then he put his hands around my waist. <laughs> so off we went to a dance, the home of Hans Christian Andersen, which fired up Glenn no end. <laughs> Welcome right. to yet yeah, you know where you are today. You are in Orden, sir. Owens is the fairy tale capital of the world. I want his He's job. Wonderful. I really oh, yeah. want his job. Please, somebody, can I be Hans Christiansen in England? Oh, what can I say? We, we aim to please. So tonight, as Hans Christian Andersen, it's Glenn from Coach Trip. <laughs> Christian Anderson, I've many a tale to tell, and though I'm a cobbler, I'd say I tell them rather well. I'll mend your shoes and I'll fix your boot when I've got a moment free. When I'm not otherwise occupied as a purple duck or a mountain side or a quarter after three. I'm <laughs> Christian Anderson, Anderson, that's me, and that is me. That's all for us. Good night. Hills TV Burp, The Best Bits, is out now on DVD and is available from all good retailers. Get ready for what can only be described as an epic eating trial between finalists Dougie and Mark. Just you wait for this one. The King of the Jungle will be crowned. It's at 9.30. Stay where you are, though. The X Factor semi-final is next.